Hey guys, and welcome to another edition of The Kevin Moore Show. Now, the interview that you're about to watch was with a guest called Winterlake that was taped on location in Chicago about a year ago. Now, this interview is part of a future docu-series that I'm doing. So, we do talk about a particular person in the interview, but we don't name him towards the end of it. But it will make more sense when the uh, docu-series comes out next year. Now, just to give you a bit of background on Winterlake, he's a practitioner of satanic black magic. He has published over five books on the subject of Satanism, remote viewing, and remote influencing. He is also a psychic that has assisted law enforcement in the capacity of finding the missing or the murdered, and has occasionally assisted in locating murderers. He is also an avid screenwriter, ghostwriter, and biographer. So enjoy my interview with Winter Lake. Winter Lake, thank you so, so much for joining us here in Chicago. Thank you. It's nice to be here. It's great to get you back on. So um, we originally did a, an interview in person. God, it was a couple of years ago right, now, right. right? And I never thought I'd be here interviewing interviewing you. You know, like oh, this. Oh, it's great. It's it's, yeah, you it's know, wonderful. You never know where life's going to take you. I know. You're on a path. You're on a road. You're going around the country. It's kind of like. Uh, the occult ride, you know. The occult ride, I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. And I'll link our previous interview in the description below as well. So just to begin with, if you just tell us, you know, if you could sum yourself up and just, ha you know, ha what you've been up to for, you know, all these years. Well, you know, I'm a Luciferian. Um, I'm a pragmatist. I'm a philosopher. Uh, I have a background in philosophy and quantum physics. Uh, very broad base, a broad brush into many different realities and forms. Um, ironically, I have no ego about these things. Um, a lot of people get caught up in their own ego and in, in, in this kind of new wave where everyone is now a witch and everyone is following into this massive satanic movement which is like overtaking the world um, which in my opinion it, it's great because you know people are releasing and unleashing their beasts and they're unleashing themselves uh, into the world and, and, and expressing themselves through Satanism because it's it's exponential it's it's a massive movement now it's like it's so commonplace Whereas like before, even a decade ago, when I started writing my books, um, it was like still considered very much low class. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, you're, you're into satanic thinking. It's so tired. It's like, oh, you're just, it's, you know, anti-Christian reversion and so on. And now seeing where, and I feel that I've taken a part of the role in that, even if it's a minor one taking it from basically nine years ago being non-existent and now seeing an evolution where we have everyone, really everyone taking a good look at it, jumping into, you know, occult concepts and, and experiencing and experimenting with satanic thinking and experimenting with, with all that comes with the occult, whether it's channeling, whether it's psychometry, whether it's necromancy, you know, all the different clairaudient or clairvoyant experiences and remote viewing. Whereas before, there was a super lull in, in, in thinking and in, in all of it from about, I would say, 1998 till about especially 2007, there was virtually, in my opinion, no real satanic activity. So to sum up what I do, that was my mantra. In 2009, I wrote The Satanic Paradigm, and it was meant to be, this is a new moniker. This is a new beginning. You know, it was, it's not just Levian concepts. People label me as a Levian Satanist. That's part of it. There is... Lord Byron, there's Aleister Crowley, there's any innumerable philosophers that you can borrow from, Machiavelli, you know, even Vlad Tepesh or Countess Dracula, you know, Countess, you know, Bathory and so on. And, and all of these different people are incorporated in it. But, and so why I'm mentioning that is that 
you know, even though I am, I am a part of that LeVayan concept and I have a lot of respect for what Anton LeVay had started in 1966, there is more incorporated now. You know, for me personally, that was always my goal to bring in all of these different aspects you know, whether it's the Hellfire Club or any of these things that, that can just add to all of the different satanic thinking and thought patterns throughout the last thousands of years, as opposed to, to our short-term thinking. So, you know, that was my mantra to begin a new age, a new age of Satan, to, to move forward and to and express in new ways through philosophy and a lot of other things, you know, the pattern of what Lucifer can offer. Because I think people are tired of being weak. They're looking for strength, you know, and, and Luciferian concepts being one with the darkness offer strength as opposed to weakness. But, you know, that can be construed and misused as well. You know, when I think of anything satanic or, you know, the occult, I always automatically think that's evil. You know, I, you know I've very much been into the kind of love light subjects. But I, what is the difference? I mean, I mean it, it, to you, evil is a real thing. Evil exists in this reality. Would you agree with that? Evil is very real. Um... And there are certain elevations of evil. Uh, you have very chaotic, destructive, uncivilized evil, which would be your ISIS or your savages or people that rape children or just random acts of just destructive behavior. That's very uncivilized. I follow more of a path of a civilized evil, which we are cordoned in through law. We are, in my opinion, an inherently evil species. We are not a good species. We are a lawful evil force. We basically eat and devour other beings. Unfortunately, that's what happens. We are not a good species. We have to maintain ourselves through the cordon of law. If we did not do that, if we did not build around ourselves law, we would become very radical, destructive, evil beings. We would unleash ourselves into a more uncivilized state. If we remove the boundaries of law, you will see it. Now, I don't know why that happens, but in my philosophical exploration, that's where I endeavored to understand. I have people that I've debated that says, we are inherently a good species. We must strive. And I can understand that concept. It would be great to be an altruist. But if you are playing your flute by a tree and the world around you is starving, they will devour you. They will shove the flute down your throat. That is the problem. That is why... We are living on a very borrowed amount of time in this false sense of utopia. We are devouring our fossil fuels. We are overbreeding our planet. We are meeting into a very cataclysmic space. You know, Carl Sagan explored a little bit of this as well, but he didn't dabble so much into the demographics. And this isn't even a racial issue. But as mankind runs out of things, the real nature of his survival will come forward, and it's the survival of the greatest evil with the greatest amount of power that will vanquish and annihilate and unfortunately destroy great, great swaths of the population. And it's unfortunate. I know, when, when you hear, you know, or let me say it like this. When I was born into this society when I you know became aware and I was like shit man I had no choice you know I, I you know I, I had to grow up in the system the way it was I couldn't choose it or choose it to be different 
thinking about that, you know, would I have wanted it to be, could it have been different? You know, we, we say we don't, you know, fuck the police and all this, don't we? Or, you know, some people do, or, you know, um, what we, we go, you know, with the conspiracy theories that I've surrounded myself around sometimes, I've been against the system. But if that system wasn't in place, like you say, what would we become? Place would be on fire. The entirety of any kind of safety would be gone. You would be dealing with nomads and roving hordes with the biggest guns or the biggest knives. It would be a world that we would not want to live in. Civilized evil, a constrained evil, is the way. Hence Lucifer, Luciferian embrace. So for me personally, as, as I have done, that is why I've just become one with my source. I've admitted who I am and I see my potential and I have let go of a lot of false alacrity and a lot of falsehood that has been introduced into my life through conditioning and so on. Because once you realize that you have been a conditioned person and you can break from those sheeple concepts, you become enlightened, you become awakened and in darkly awakened in my sense, because within two weeks of running out of fuel, this place will be burning. When, when we are out of our food, when there's no more food at the, at, the, at the awesome grocery stores that we have exposure to, you're gonna see massive hordes and ravaging. And even in any kind of holocaustic event, like a, a hurricane, you see it, runs on the stores, looting, murder, rape, within hours of the grid going down and things happening. Now, that isn't me pushing that to occur. This is my exploration in my philosophy. I want to know why that happens. I wanted to know, and I still, it's an ever-seeking thing. I want to know, why is it that if we have no grid, man reacts like this. Is it fear-based? Sure. Is it mob-based? Sure. But it's essentially survival and it reveals his evil nature. Because once he's deprived, man deprived is beast, in my opinion. So it's very important, unfortunately, and we don't like to live under the sword or cudgel of law. But with law, we are constrained beast. And we, we walk the line in no respect and, and no love for one another. And we can have good things happen for one another. And we can be compassionate towards one another within these confines. But if they unfortunately did not exist, you know, we could try. But it would just be the horde overrunning and you would have certain tribal things. And So your understanding of the nature of reality then. Okay, so... Um it was always my take on it, and this was just my take, that, that, that I was a, a soul having a human experience. That this essence of the I am that's behind my eyes, that's in my brain, that's the awareness of me being aware, came from somewhere else. And it's almost like I've all, you know, I'd like to think that it always has been and always will be. But we had this discussion previously in our previous interview that, you know, you, you put me under anesthetic or, or under the knife and I don't remember shit. I just see blackness. I, I know. Don't, I don't, there, there, there is nothing there, right? I know. Right. That's a very dark experience. We, we as a society, with all of the civilizations that have come and gone, with all of the people that have turned to dust, the billions and billions of humans that have come before, we are no closer to answering what is death or what is beyond death. Now, I have remote viewed and looked in with my mind into the universe and, and peered somewhat beyond the veil. I get some certain things because I do understand or I have a comprehension of quantum entanglement. I can see some parallel. But still, even with all that, and I, I'm kind of like in my opinion, 90% uh, uh, of the highest echelon of human being looking into this veil 
and I still don't know what it is. So there is some great vast force or power that keeps us up against a black wall. And I have no idea. It is, is immense. It is outer space. It is dark matter. You know, it is the essence of everything that is. I feel that I am at one with darkness and at one with dark matter. And I still can't comprehend or understand truly what death is could bring now that is bizarre and that all of this has gone before and we still are no closer to the answer oh, and what about people with near-death experiences they're either faking it then or it's some it's 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 some chemical in the uh, reaction in the mind yeah it's so bizarre you know back in 2011 uh i i uh i i foresaw that i was going to die okay so i did everything that prevented it and hence i'm still alive so it does show it can be sub subverted um near-death experiences are fascinating um you know it, it could be like the occurrence at owl creek you know where you have a where you have a briefness of life in a dream and by the time the rope rope snaps your neck on the scaffold you've lived a whole life it's so hard to ascertain you know, we could get into the godlike concepts or they see a mystical angel or whatever. Is that what you want to see? Can the mind perceive what it wants through its nautical thought? So it's still, it's still unknown and it's still fascinating, you know, and I've talked with people that have had near-death experiences and, you know, a girl who was underwater, frozen and all this and, and then comes out of the lake and speaks French you know, is a totally different person. The anomalies of time, of everything that's gone on, and that gets me into that quantum entanglement, that everything is a flowing matter force. So when you're given a reading, for example, you might just be tapping into a future, a future potential. That, True. You know, a, a parallel reality where it, ha it has happened, or that is the outcome if that does happen. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll pick, but any reading you give then, uh, it's not set to say that's going to be the way. This is just a potential. Yeah, and it, it's in the readings that I've been giving are are off the charts. I mean, it, yeah, it can be anything. It can be any kind of facet, and some of it you go right instead of left, and this can happen, and this can happen, and that's and it gets into this thing where, in knowing all that, and in seeing all that in a reading, and in understanding how time can be translucent to the human condition, meaning that it could have already been lived, that we've already died, that we've already relived again, that we could be looping. There are so many possibilities that we may feel that every day is new to us, but it's not. not. It's we are living, we are in a physical body, but is it, in, and we are interchangeable in from our life and death experience. That is a possibility that I've remote viewed and I still have to hard times doing it, you know, and, and for me it's a struggle because I want to know. It's funny you say that because in the, doc the channeling documentary that I've just filmed, it, you know, some of the channelers talk about the Lupin effect where, you know, we've done this all before. This is now mm -hmm. another chance to do it differently. We may actually be having a life, ex a life review, but the life review is that real that you wouldn't know the difference, no. you know? And actually, it does count. It yeah, does it count. There's something yeah. going on. You know, that's what the, the, the deja vu thing may be sometimes. It's all the, Mandel, Mandel, the, the uh, Mandela effect, <laughs> you know? Yes. We, we've done this before. We're now getting chances to do it again. And, it, it's, it, you know, and it's not boring because we don't remember it before. You know, and it's odd. You know, deja vu, we give it a name. We are in a moment in time. And then we feel that we were experiencing it. Like, well, I kind of, these certain things. Now, was it because maybe you were re in that repetitious cycle? Yeah. But there's something to that that lends itself to, to that, again, that quantum entanglement, that ever movement that we have existed. And, you know, I even dabbled in, in, in trying to contact my other self in other realities and so on so i'm going right and left with this as well because i constantly feel not constantly but i'm going to tell you every now and then i'll get i'll get a glimpse of 
like nine or ten different scenarios going on simultaneously. So it's just different. If you try hard enough and if you open yourself hard enough, you can really you can really experience things. You know, I've been really jumping into this since I was like five years old. And I've stayed kind of really sober. I'm like a weird straight edge guy just because I, I keep my mind really focused on certain things. And uh, there is a great mystery. And there's still so much yet for the human condition to explore within itself and within its mind and, and to explore and understand what death could bring or what death means. And decisions. Decisions, too. Like, I could go and smash this window and just cut myself up. I can deliberately, and we know that would be totally out of the normalcy of the process. But then people can do that, too. You know, they take guns or they kill themselves. So much free will. Or, and, but it's just, you know it's wrong when you want to reach outside of that boundary that well, you've kind of created what, for yourself. What keeps you here? What keeps you from <coughs> not wanting to reach outside that? Because some people do. It's some people some people do commit suicide. Some people fail at it. Mm -hmm. Some people say, well, unless you've ever considered suicide, you've never lived. True. Or murders. People that are compelled to kill. People that are compelled to kill. Or, you know, living out that will amongst themselves. That their will... Oh, that, kill it, don't give a shit. True. Cold killers. I'm a pretty cold killer. I don't kill physically. I do cast magic. I'm not a nice person. I have a lot of respect. I have some very good friends. And I, I'm not a fear monger or creator. But, you know, the world is not a nice place. It is a wicked place. And um, it's, it does not treat people right. And it works them over and it deceives them. You know, you'll get into different interactions with people and you think you're all on the same page, but there's something broken going on with that person where they're emotionally withholding or they're having some opinion of you uh, that you don't aren't aware of, but you're engaging with them and then you feel that you're kind of really communing with that person. But see, for me, Luciferian concepts, it, it kind of limits some of that, so you're kind of guarded. But in society and in humanity, it plays tricks on one another, and then they step outside of themselves, and they do things, and the, the criminology of things. You know, what compels a boy to pick up a knife and go out and start stabbing people at school? Or the, this, this massive movement, I call it massive, because these children are now turning on the system, bringing guns in and killing all these people. You know, where is that coming from? Where, where does a kid lose it to, to, to shoot up his classmates? Yeah. yeah. It's not even adults killing kids, it's kids killing kids. Yes. Yeah, well, it's like the gangs killing gangs, isn't it? It's, 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 it's all, it, there's a lot of gang violence, yeah, especially in Chicago. Way. Oh, yes. You know. Um, so you feel that the world is inherently evil, but, but then what about the people who say, yeah, but as a soul, it's not evil. As a soul, it's, it, it just comes from love, and it comes here to have this experience because there's nowhere else really in the galaxy like this or even in the known universe if you would get out of time for what the soul, the soul's out of time maybe, but in this kind, this is like the best virtual reality you can come to. We do. We live in a beautiful utopian society, cordoned by law. Um, I, I do not believe that, the, the, that it is a soul. It would be great. I do believe in a soul, but I don't believe that it is a soul of love. Um, I, I would like to believe it. Trust me. I, I would like to believe it, but I'm not witnessing it. I'm not experiencing it. It's not just like I've, ex I've had love affairs and I've had the romance and I've had the love of the world and I've felt the, the love and the, the, the embrace of that. But for me, it cannot exist without the cordon of law. And, um, and I've restricted myself from 
going there because I kind of view it as, and I hate to say this, as weakness. Uh, I've had people try to take my kindness as weakness, um, but uh, I feel that that makes you vulnerable in a world that is wicked. And, and unfortunately, I see so much of it in the Jesus racket or in the, the, the Muslim uh, nonsense that is peddled or any of this where they're taking people's money and they're victimizing people and they're selling them love and they're taking this material thing from grandma and all this and I don't like it. And I think these people need to be reined in. You know, Olstein, this guy, this TV preacher in Texas, I'm not slandering, I'm just speaking truth. He writes a book called I Am Power. How, if you are following a Christian concept, are you taking on the moniker that you're power, unless you're a Luciferian? So you have a lot of these twisted, perverse concepts being utilized to manipulate the, the, the horde, to manipulate these people. They'll sell you the love racket. They'll sell you it. And they'll make you feel one. And that's where a lot of cults use these parlor trick manipulation techniques in order to, you know, oh, we love you, you know, kill yourself for me. Or, you know, we love you, we need you to peddle this, this, this nonsense for us, and that money needs to come back to our group. You know, everything is about some kind of give and take and manipulation. I haven't seen one group, maybe Buddhists, Maybe Buddhists, but I haven't really seen any real group that doesn't have some kind of racket to it. And so love is lost in that. That this love, and it would be awesome if I could embrace that. This global love soul, we are all experiencing this one moment in time. But dude, there's someone there with a dagger who's ready to just take it. Ready to take your life. But do you, do you think that, I mean, look, this is like the, the old eternal question, really, but it, and, and does it really matter right now, this question? But I'm going to ask it anyway. No, but, go for it. Uh, y y when we take our last breath, when, when we are transitioning onwards, and we, even as you said, it, all the research that you've done, all, even, even the, 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 you know, the remote viewing that you've done, mm -hmm. it's, it's so almost unanswerable because, but. Is it possible that when we step out of this of, of this this spacesuit, that there's a more, there's a more loving state that we go to that we've actually come from? Which is very forgotten. possible. Be amazing. The 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 infinity of the universe beckons it. When you have an infinite amount of space, you have an infinite amount of possibility. Whatever is going on here doesn't necessarily need to go on there. You know, I've remote viewed throughout the universe, and I've seen all kinds of different aliens doesn't require anyone else's belief in what I'm saying. I just have a concept of what I've seen. From all great scales and sizes, there's all kinds of things going on throughout this universe. I have yet to discover this great utopian place in all my looking, but I would love to see it. I mean, it would be wonderful to have paradise. Paradise has its price, I feel, but you know, to, in the deathbed and all this, and then to say, you know, some kind of incantation or pray to some deity uh, that would give you this, that would be wonderful. But I, I personally don't see any deity outside of myself. We are an evolving species. We are an evolving Satan. We are a species of Luciferian ideals and growth and power. Is evil then a, a, a conscious thing? Is it? Is it? You, you... It's a natural thing. It's a natural thing. Evil is a natural thing. People say it's a choice. It can be a choice, but when the chips are down, the grid fails. No more food, and we are trying to survive. It becomes a whole different thing. It's no longer a choice. We become that beast. We become 666. We are unleashed. Unfortunately, I mean, maybe you could constrain yourself, live in a bunker and try to starve yourself out for a few like days or months, maybe. But it's so, it's so contextual. Um, you know, 
evil is fascinating experience as well. You have all of these different types and levels to it. I dwell in a civilized evil, as I feel most of society does. And I feel that it is cordoned by law, which is so important. Um, but, you know... If I was to say to you, what is black magic, how could you answer that simply? You know, black magic is a black soul. I have a black soul. It's black projection. I could cast over you and you would feel it. There would be a shadow motion. It's a power. I'm not going to. I have a lot of respect for you and, and we are friends and associates. But it is. It's a, it's a physical power and a projection from that inherent darkness that you have to embrace. It's not, it's not something that has never been there. It's just an admittance. I am at one with dark matter. It flows throughout the universe. It interconnects all things. It, there is no movement because it is. Space is an is. Like this darkness right here, a pure sweep. That television is a pure sweep. One field, one knowledge, one, all force. So, in, in kind of understanding that, when I would cast a spell, and I use evocations because it begins to evoke the energy, the flow, and the, the, the constraints of that are broken because I am ever constraining my power. Now, is it like this ridiculous, you know, you can choke someone out or do telekinetic things. It's not there yet. It's quite possibly through the singularity, some of those things will be breached and the mind will unleash itself. Now, I don't know what to expect when that happens in the next few years, when they begin to tink tinker in the mind and what, what I can initiate, what I can already see manifesting you know, happens. For example, I'll curse someone. I'll project that negative shadow over that person. They won't, they won't, they don't have a chance. I've killed so many people. I've killed people since I was a young child. When I was in high school, I cast. And when you know you have that power and when you witness it, for example, there was a bully in my school. I put a spell on him, within a week he was decapitated. That gives you the power to walk on water. You now know that what you're initiating or what you're at one with, you can fly. And you haven't talked about that that much. You mean, you've talked about it before, but not in, not <coughs> right. in great detail. I mean, and that's just one down a list. Yeah, and, and this is where you had, um, you, ha you must have, wh where were you casting that spell from? You must have had a lair or something, or you must Yeah, I had a lair, yeah. And I cast a spell, put a curse, and he was right. gone. But I could almost, and you could feel it, man. I could feel it right here, right now. And, and how did you... And this is when you were first getting into black first, magic. First, yeah. Yes. It was really a, a, what, like a... What book did you... I mean, you, know, you know, I was into Levain and Crowleyism, all your general New Age concepts. That was part of it. And, and these books were just initiatory. Everything is a tool. Everything is a tool to unlock, <coughs> to unleash your inner darkness. You know, so that was... These were things that I were utilized... But it, in a sense, the essence is, is initially from within yourself. And there's been others. I mean, many others. People and even clients that have taken on things that I've done. You know, I'll take a fee and, and then I'll initiate some things. And I'll remove things too. But literally, Kevin, you just feel it, man. I can feel it in here. For some reason, I'm vibing with you and I'm, I'm feeling it in here, dude. And I mean, I could, I could probably shatter something with, with the way the energy is. When I build it up like this, and in our discussion, because clearly you're, you're a man of the world and your strength is very powerful and we're vibing and I could feel this strength. And, when I, and this is where it is, where it's like a fulcrum effect. So, you know, I can just feel it right here. And if I start initiating and if I had a target, 
I'm sure it would not be a good outcome for that person, but I don't really choose to do that. No, because right um, you can also use this for a positive method right. as well. For yeah. my own thing, advancement for you or us or friends. So, so when clients mm -hmm. come to see you, for example, mm -hmm. okay, what, w what would you not do for a client? I mean, if, if we go down the relationship road, I mean, there must be a lot of relationship a lot issues. Of petty bullshit. Right, petty yeah. bullshit, right. Uh, but sometimes the petty bullshit, these people are putting hexes on people or putting All curses the time. on people. Yeah, they do. Ex girlfriends on, onto the onto the. Oh, guy. absolutely. Yeah, or boyfriends are doing it. It's a lot of men doing it now. Um, because now everyone is a witch, everyone is practicing. It's up on all the feeds. Everyone is super obsessed with ghost hunting and so on. But yeah, I mean, people are putting spells on each other. They're hexing each other. They're projecting on each other. They're bringing negative energy on each other over the most petty things. What I won't do is, is get involved with a divorce case over somebody who's, who feels that their heart is breaking. You know, that happens. People walk out on people. You, you don't have ownership. It sucks. It's hard to admit. <coughs> I've been there too, man. I, and maybe not, maybe not everyone, but people, they're just, they're just up and gone. You could feel like you're in the greatest love affair of the world and she's not into it or she just up and outs. And that's how it goes. And the guy will call me up and be like, I'll give you three thousand dollars, and you put her in the ground. I'm like, that's really not worth my time. You can pay me three thousand dollars. You can meet. I can have you meet four other women, and I usually steer him that way. And then he's like, I, I've got more dates that I want to do with, and now she's coming back. I'm just giving you an example. Well, what about the example? That's how petty where I won't go. I won't no, deal absolutely, with that. Absolutely. But what about the example where? The girl can't get a date, for example, because she's got something. She's got some 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 spell on her, mm -hmm. and she doesn't fucking know it. Banishment. Right. Yeah, it requires a banishment, and you have to admit to yourself that you're under a curse. Um, it's hard to admit it because we all are prideful and we have ego. But you kind of not you, but I mean, I'm using that term. Uh, a person kind of knows when they're under something. When their luck is dragging in a consistent negative way for longer than a few months, something's wrong, you know? I mean, these people carry around stuff for like 10 years or five years, some of them. Oh, oh yeah, 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 absolutely. I mean, so when people come to you, sometimes you, rec you, can, you can tune in with the cars or whatever method right. you use to see, is there something there? You're not, you're not just tuning in on a, a vibratory level, you're, you're using tools as well to right. check. the tools, yeah. yeah, the tools are important. I mean, I really don't even need tools anymore, um, but I use them. I've released like 14 tarot decks this year, and I'm getting into it. Um, the tool is very effective, and yeah, I'll see right away. You know, you'll get to looking into someone and you'll be like, yeah, there's, there's something hanging over this person. Somebody put a curse on them or they have an ancestral curse that has gotten entangled through others. So some people have been cursed two or three times in their lives and they're carrying all of this kind of visceral stuff. Some of it will go dormant for a minute and then revisit itself on the person. But usually it all comes down to wanting that person tired, depressed, destroyed, isolated, uh, lethargic, um, falling into sickness, uh, compulsions to addiction, seeking destructive behavior, and so on. And creating entanglements, getting in entanglements with other people. And it's not really something you're about, but people just don't like you, you know? But, but not all of that can be based on, uh, on you know, black magic or curses. Right. Because some people's lives are just like that. Right, they choose to be in a negative look. They, yes. yes. Yeah, no, I mean, in specifically looking at the tools, I can look at this and then find out. And then, and then they usually have a general pattern to their life. But yes, people can choose to be an asshole. You know, they don't take command of their lives. They're lazy and, you know, they sleep all the time and they wonder why things aren't coming their way or the doors aren't knocking. You know, that opportunity, you got to go out and seize it. You know, black magic also is not just a silver bullet. 
you can cast a spell and 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 just like lay on it and nothing will happen you've got to cast a spell you've got to put all your thinking into it you've got to take action and once you combine with these things then positive things that come into your life and whatever form you're using i call it black magic other someone else could call it witchcraft someone else could call it new thought someone else could call it uh love thinking whatever you want to call it you know whatever you're doing it takes some kind of motivation an active force on your part could, could it be the same as law of attraction a bit yeah whatever it takes yeah. you know i'm a voracious reader and studier and i've looked into all kinds of stuff and um you know and i have found that motivation can be a false god because you know it's it's not it, it lacks the determination with it you know but it is good motivation can be good as well so you know whatever works for that individual but curses are very fickle and they i've looked at people and and i've not seen them too and they've had them and then they'll be gone so do you get people coming to you that want healing as well yeah i've i've experienced that more so lately um I, I have dabbled in it occasionally. Um, I, you know, Edgar Gacy was a master of it and so on. He could do it while he was asleep and he could go and heal people of, of great addictions or illnesses and so on. It's, it's very technical work. It's kind of like the guy who wants to win the lottery too. You know, those are two things that are really hard to do. I think they're a little bit more left brain. I think a lot of this flow comes from the right. I am left brain as well, so I have had some success with it, but I, I take it on very slowly because I don't want to go taking someone's thousands of dollars and, and, and them wishing on a star, them hoping that I'm going to be their solution that's going to solve their cancer. You know, so I'm very, you know, I'm not a charlatan, okay? I, and I guess no charlatan would really admit it, but 90% of charlatans do that kind of bullshit. I don't have the interest in that. I've had people offer me great amount of money and I've still shied away from it, you know, per se. And I do take money because it is a material world and I'm a materialist, I'm a Satanist and so on. So, you know, there's, there's straight justification there for what I do. You know, a service is a service. But I'm not just taking on stuff that I don't think is good. I'll tell them that I'll try it, and I've had some success with it. But, you know, it's not like the, the golden end. It's not going to cure your addiction. Yeah, yeah. You know, I have done it, though. I've known people that were stricken with heroin, and I did auto-suggestion combined with magic and pulled them out of it. What about if someone came to you and said, look, you know, um, I'm a survivor of a rapist, you know, they've been raped, right? Um, you know, uh, and, and I want to get my revenge back on that person. I'm down. I'm down. You know, why not? As long as it's legitimate. You know, sometimes it's hoax. You know, sometimes it's a hoax. Most, you know, I, I'm not saying most, but 50-50. How, how do you know? How would you know? Do you know yeah, I have to look into it. I'll do a reading. I'll, I'll throw some runes. I'll, I'll look into it. And um, I found that some people are not being truthful. They just don't like the person. And I'll probably still do it, to be honest, because they don't like that person. And then I'll kind of find things I don't like about the person. So, you know, when we talk about the inherent evilness of man mm -hmm. and when we look at child abuse, or we, we, or we look at, well, just in our society nowadays, right, you know, with the amount of rape claims mm -hmm. that have come forward in the, in the political system, right? Mm -hmm. What is driving man to do that? Where does that drive come from? Savage nature, that uncivilized aspect. I mean, look at what happens in prison. I mean, you've got men that are just totally raped and raped by themselves or by, raped by these beasts. It's just uncivilized, unconstrained, evil, chaotic, savage, lower level. It is a part of it. A lot of, you know, whatever you want to call it, Luciferians or 
people that follow this path don't want to talk about it. They don't want to talk about anything outside of themselves because they're atheists, most of them. I'm not. I do believe there's a very much a force and energy which flows within me. I'm at one with it. Um, and they're not looking at anything and they say, oh, you know, I'm an atheist and, you know, this isn't happening. And it's kind of like blind eye stuff. It's kind of like when you get that resolute Christian person <coughs> or these crazy Islamists that want to say that anything outside of them is an infidel. Um, and yeah, it gives them the right to rape children. It gives them the justification to do horrible things to one another. That is uncivilized evil. That has no place in my world. You know, it really doesn't. I have no interest in being around anyone or, or knowing really much about that. There's so much, it's so predominant. You know, people are attacking children. The children are attacking children. And that goes to my philosophy about that inherent evil, you know? Well, you started off with saying yeah, that. And yeah, and unfortunately, yeah, yeah. it's terrible. It's not something I really, I mean, it's, I'm, and I'm, I'm saying it's terrible. I think it's awful. I've elevated my consciousness, and I think anyone on this path needs to do so as well. So, so do you, the, the clients that you get then, are they at, are they kind of coming to your level? I mean, uh, are they below your They're level? from everywhere. I don't really, I don't know. I mean, they're, they're just on their own. I mean, they're on their own path. Yeah. People are entitled to believe whatever they want. Yeah. I'm not looking to shove anything down anyone's throats or make anyone a believer or try to, you know, draw someone in or, you know, what, what the Jehovah's Witnesses do. They, what is that term that the Jehovah's Witnesses, when they go around, and they uh, attempt to draw people into their fold or whatever. We're going to look back on this and we were like, it was called this. Yeah, there is a term for it. That's but neither right. here nor there, I'm not interested in that. But yeah, they, my, they come from all levels. You know, I've got recent ones, different age groups, and some have since hence deceased, really. I've had clients for like decades. You know, I was doing this kind of racket long before I was writing. My writing only came about within the past nine years, and I've just continued with that. Yeah. So, well, you've got many different passions, right. haven't you? And this this has been one of them. Right. And, and how many books have you done in the occult? Then? Probably about eleven. Eleven. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, and they're all available. Yeah. On, uh, Amazon, on the links yeah. that are coming up on the screen as well, and in the description as well, and on Amazon. Um, so, I've had. Um, a number of women come forward to me recently and they told me the story of how they they were astrally raped they were they were raped in their dream now when i when i first heard that i thought well, that just can't be true but they're all saying the same thing mm -hmm. so have you come across that before i you know it's it's very much a real thing um when dealing with aliens as well. I mean, aliens will levitate you through a wall right out the window with their higher advanced technology. Um, yeah, and the astral projection is very real. Uh, if, if you are determined enough to to want to rape someone or send an incubus to someone, you know, it goes to what I said before about the universe and infinity. In an infinite amount of space, you have an infinite amount of possibility, so nothing can be ruled out. There is nothing, we are constrained within this dimension, but outside, within the dream state, we, when the mind and certain things are, are cogent and active, you can project and you can send things, you can open portholes, you can do a lot if you are a motivated person, you know. But you would have to know a bit about black magic Black to do magic, this. yes. That, and black magic is just a term we call it. Um, it can it can be many things. It can be scientific honing. It can be all kinds of different variables. I, but what I call it is black magic. Black magic projection, insinuation, psychic influencing, science, uh, psychic misdirection, or or all kinds of different things. But it all centers from the mind. It's a fulcrum. You can open a porthole. Something from another dimension will come through, 
or you can send yourself astrally and you can go and rape or whatever you choose. Myself, I'll go and fly through the universe and try to explore different things. Other people, they choose to go and attack women in their bed, men too. So it's whatever. It's a weird time. It, it, it is, and um, what's been happening here is that the, the, most of the women that I've spoken to, they would, they, there was a permission exchange at the beginning of this, right? So, so there's like, you know, you give me permission to, to work with you now. I've got your full permission. And it's almost like you don't normally hear that in readings, right? Mm -hmm. That's something, that permission is something else almost. Mm -hmm. Why would you need such permission for? You know, I mean, if you're going to when you when I if, if you're going to give a reading to someone, they've come to you. It's almost like you, you're you're wanting to get into their uh, aura, their their mm. their psyche, their um, permission their leads to submission, and it's a psychological parlor trick. You're utilizing auto suggestion. You're utilizing a lot of different, you know, elements within that to bring that person into your influence, and that is the beginning of psychic influencing. Because then you're bringing that person under your will. You know, you can hypnotize someone very much once they submit. You know, once you say, hey, once you take this action, I want you to take this action for me. They go, oh, yes, of course, you know, whatever. And then you're in, you're in their minds, you're in their aura. And you can influence them and you can make them do your bidding. You know, black magic is the essence of bending reality to your will and making the world do your bidding. So it's very much in, in the posture to taking black magic and taking an individual and saying, oh, yes, we'll do this reading, but I want you to submit to me. I want you to open yourself completely to my will. I want you to become one with me and so on. These are straight up parlor tricks. Rasputin used it. Madame Blavatsky used it, these, you know, these, and also all innumerable other different people have used, utilized it. Marquis de Sade, and it's a BDSM exchange as well, master servitude and so on. Yeah, because these women, when they, when they came into the presence of this man, uh, they were um, bespotted, that they, 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 they were in love. Almost, they they, mm -hmm. they they didn't know where that came from because mm -hmm. they, they went there to get a reading, you know. Love they, spell, yeah. Love insinuation, mm -hmm. yeah. But would this have would would this was would the person that's putting this on the women would would he have had to initiate something before he met them? There must be some. Does he get the spell book out? For I mean, you know, it's, yeah. I mean, it's quite possible, or you know, he just immediately jumped on it the minute he got in close. Um, or you can do that that way as well. Right. Once you get immediate in a space with someone, you're creating that charisma, that charm, that, and that psychic manipulation begins right away. And, um, but, I mean, if he had prior knowledge of that person, yes, he started doing research. You know, he knows, knows a lot about that person, and then uh, that's an avenue as well. There's so many. These are, like, tricks governments use. I mean... These are tricks police use, you know, to get inside people's heads, to solve crimes and so on. How, how can... And to cause mayhem, so... Absolutely. And how can women that have gone through, or, or are going through this now, or, or if they ever did experience this, if they've not got someone like you to come to, how, how can they normally get over that? Is it when they... How do they regain their power back to stop the rape happening mm. in the dream state and everything like the that? The trauma is going to be ongoing and probably won't stop. Um, they would need a psychologist or maybe possibly psychotropic medication. I don't advise any of that, but, I mean, that could be an avenue out for them. But some of them know. did get it to stop, I think, when they said, I'm taking my power back. That's good. That's good. Yep, they drew that line. They drew that wall. Constant rapes with incubus or energy p pattern sent your way it's horrible what is an incubus an incubus is a it's an old ancient um verb or noun or creature that can be sent uh through portals in the night that uh can attack women in, in sexual things with them it's ancient it's from when we lived in caves well why would someone have that ability to summon such a thing where would that, that ability come it's, from it's kind of garden variety really 
truly is. You, if you want to call and project, and it's night terrors are part of it. Uh, old hag syndrome was a part of it. Being constrained, suffocated in your sleep is part of it. So, so that's there are ways. For, there's information out there how people could do this. Tons. Yeah, right. Yeah, or it's just something you figure out on your own. Everything I've done, I figured out on my own since a childhood. I, I just I learned and explored and went into science and went into all these different things and philosophies and all this. So you can learn about it, you know. And on the flip side, is a succubus. You know, for the man to get into it. But it's actually a succubus will make you feel totally dead. You will wake up feeling like you've just, you're barely alive. These, these entities are not pleasurable. They're, they've gotten through film. They've been turned into uh, good, like, you know, amazing experiences or something. They're really not. They're they're draining your energy. I was gonna, you know, what, what you, obviously the Hollywood films when it comes to horror. I mean, and, and mm -hmm. stuff like. How close is it? Is it quite? Is it some distance? It's all of, entertainment. I mean, yeah, it's all entertainment. It's not how it really is. In, in this. hard to know. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Hollywood is doing its thing. We we give it that label, just like we call things black magic. I mean, it's all entertainment. That's a reflection of what our mind is thinking. You know, our obsession with horror. Our obsession with death and, and destruction in general and sex is just insane. You just mentioned there as well, the portals. Now, these women that I've been talking to, they mentioned that the person that, that's been affecting them works with portals. That some of his information that he's given out to the public comes from portals. What the, you know, you've mentioned it, but what the hell is this? Well, it was... Uh, it's multifaceted. A porthole can be called a rift, a dimension door, a, a way, a dream state to exit the body and to open a gateway to another dimension or another space in time. Um, does it really exist for the average person? Probably not because they would just view it as some nonsense. But it mostly is conjured through the dream state. And um, from that, you will just enter another dimension that is foreign from this one. Um, and some other being will come through, a nefarious creature. We can call it by a myriad, a thousand different names, um, but it's, it can be driven to do our bidding in a sense. But then if your information is coming from that space, how goddamn reliable is that? It's not reliable. It turns on you, it gets inside you, <clears throat> it takes possession of you. You are compelled to do things. You could be a serial killer. It could, it just, it's anything, absolutely, yeah. You know, and, it's, and it delves into the nefarious behavior. Generally, these things, and that's what goes along with my whole premise about the universe, galactic, uh, inherent evil force that is pervasive and so on. Because what's coming through is not good. It doesn't have good intentions. Now, obviously, having done the channeling documentary, I, don't, I can't say uh, I felt that an incubus was attached to the people that were giving me uh, the information. But then I did meet some channelers that said, you know, 99% of what people think they're channeling is not what they're channeling, and it's something disguised on itself as being enlightened and, 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 and high level, but actually it's bloody not. Right. You know, it's giving some loving information, but actually it's, it's misleading. The rest is misleading. Yeah, I mean, because what's in it for it? Whatever that thing is that comes through, it's not your friend. It doesn't care about you. It doesn't know you. It's just looking to, to mess around with you. It, it, it has an ethereal body. It could be another creature in a dream state, like you're in a dream state. So, you know, it's it, these things are very slippery. And people that delve into it, they'll conjure these certain things, sending it against people to attack them or rape them. It's just... Yeah, let, let's just sum it up there. We're, we're, we're saying that people have summoned this in. This is not the norm to channel. This is no, it's not the, not the, it's not the you, to go into a portal is not the way I, most people that I've ever spoke to do it, no. right? Except no. something negative. Yeah, it is. I mean, I've, I've seen people that have died doing sh stuff like this. You know, Crowley was doing experiments with this uh, 
when he was at his place at Boluskin House in Scotland. I mean, he was attempting to uh, go into that, but he almost died doing some things like that. So, yeah, when people delve into these kind of things, there's only destruction that can come to the person and whoever else is around that he's trying to evoke. Could that be long-term destruction? It may Very not be apparent so. in the yeah. beginning part. Oh, yeah. So once that portal's opened, um, it's not closed, so you just get an open channel. And we can go through as well, but it's not... Our place here on Earth is so nice, to be honest. Our planet is so beautiful. It's like an orb in the universe, you know, and it's amazing that we haven't had anything physically show up, but it's the expanse of space and time so far. The, yes, these women are being attacked, and they're being attacked by some outside force that is seeking nefarious intention, either enslavement physically or of their spiritual essence. And the intention is to destroy them and to obviously take what they have or whatever. This person who's ever behind it, a uh, black magician most likely, who's just uncivilized, who is just a savage, who may even get his rocks off by doing something like this. Um, it, it takes a little bit of wherewithal, but it is kind of garden variety. You know, it's, it, it's kind of like, you know, I've mentioned this before, like a serial killer, you know, but he's using different methods. And a serial killer is a mindless. So this person may be overtaken by whatever he's conjured into his life, and he brought all that into his life, and now he's possessed by it. And the thing is just carrying on with more so, attacking more people, and just mindlessly doing it. You know, just like, you know, Dahmer, when he was interviewed, he's like, I don't even know what was in me doing that or why I was devouring people. Now, now he says, now that's a very good point, because he says he's half mantis. Or what, you know, and I, but I, I say that's just a fucking excuse. Do you know what I mean? But, but, but what you just said there was important because what you're saying there is, is you know, what, what, if, uh, what if he's actually taken over by it now? Right, absolutely. More than likely he is. I'm control of my will. You're in control of your will. You know when a person's not. And some people do have this Dr. Jekyll Hyde even where they'll partially control, but then when something else is introduced they become the Jekyll or whatever. They come the Hyde or whatever. Because the thing is, right, I mean, if I was a bird on the wall, what if he's doing none of that stuff and there's no black magic, but, but then where, where are the women getting these stories from, from this incubus? Mm. Why are they all saying the same thing? They're being attacked by this, this person. He's, he's let it in or he's initiated it. Somebody has. So when... Um, People in my industry talk about, you know, Kev, you're working for the dark side. You know, light workers are so easily manipulated by the dark side. You know, he's working for the Illuminati. Is there such a thing? I, I, I think it's all out of bollocks. Right. There is no Illuminati. There is no dark side. There's only one elemental force, and we're all flowing in it. And we can either be good with one another, or we can be very evil towards one another. There is no Illuminati. There is a group of people, bankers, that work together to initiate their own ends, and they work together in cartels or any other groups in order to push their own values and to make money and so on. You can call that an Illuminati, whatever you want to call it. It could be innumerable. It's an inherent aspect of our own species. You know, the Georgia Guidestones are a perfect example. They believe that the Georgia Guidestones are created by the Illuminati. No, it was created by a Morak, which is a Rosicrucian group that just had certain philosophies on demography. So, I mean, no, there is no Illuminati, but you could call it Illuminati. Is it when a bunch of rich dudes get together? Is it Illuminati? Sure. Whatever. They're working towards their own goals and aims. Well, people have got so carried away with Pizzagate and all these other things. Do they it's really lies. exist? I'm, 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 or QAnon? There's another, there's another mm -hmm. crazy fad right now. Yeah, and uh, but just even, even something as crazy as the Pizzagate, right? And 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 they start. You know, how how does so? Why would someone get so 
obsessed by that to think it's true. I mean, people get killed. Well, you know, there are people that have been molested as children. True. And when you get triggered. But then to say that part of our political system, like Hillary Clinton's, you know, would be a part of a, a child a porn network or something. Yeah, I mean, no. it, 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 that, that's. I mean, how it's can pretty, that even be a rubbish. shared reality? I mean, it's all rubbish. I mean, Clinton has got a lot of murder around them, you know, but uh, that's a whole different deal. That's people bringing in uh, criminal elements in their lives. But, um, yeah, I mean, you can conspiratorialize anything and everything and keep it going to the ends of the earth, and you're never finding an answer. It's just mental masturbation. It's sensory stimulus. It's misdirection. You're not looking at your own life. You're not trying to assemble anything good. You're not creating your own Illuminati, which you should be, if you wanted to be, whatever term that is. So, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, your website is? Winterlake.com. You can reach me there. And uh, I do readings, cast spells, to have some good times, so. Well, Winter, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed uh, just being with you right now as well. Now, we're going to put link your website uh, throughout this interview. It's been coming on the lower third as well. And I'd just like to say, brother, thank you so, so much. Well, thank you. It's nice being here. <laughs>